Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to share Jack's story, where his wife cheated on him. Please subscribe and like our video. Let's begin the narration. My name is Jack. It was midnight, and I sat on the couch, continuously smoking, while looking at the ashtray on the coffee table filled with cigarette butts. I sighed heavily. Holding my phone, I hesitated for a long time, sliding my finger on the contact list until it stopped at my wife Amy's name. I clenched my teeth and was just about to call her when the door suddenly swung open. I extinguished the cigarette in the ashtray and stood up from the couch, turning to see two people standing at the doorway. I widened my eyes as I looked at the man supporting Amy, he was the same man who accompanied her to the hospital. I stood frozen in place, as if my feet were glued to the floor. Amy had been drinking, her cheeks flushed, and her clothes disheveled, leaning crookedly against the man beside her. The man's face was also somewhat flushed, indicating that he had also been drinking. Seeing me at home, his expression paused for a moment. He helped Amy walk towards me and made her lie down on the couch. Amy said there was no one at home, so she asked me to bring her up, he said. Amy had a lot to drink at the dinner party. If you're available, could you make her some hangover soup? The man took a few steps towards the door and nodded at me, saying he was leaving. I looked at the man, reached into Amy's bag, took out the car keys, and caught up with him, smiling, looks like you've been drinking too. How about I give you a ride back? The man lowered his gaze, and because only the porch light was on, I couldn't see his expression clearly. I thought he would find a way to refuse, but to my surprise, he nodded in agreement. I drove the car, and the man sat in the passenger seat. I glanced at him from the corner of my eye, and he happened to look at me. Jack, when do you plan to have a child with Amy, a child? I lowered my gaze and tightened my grip on the steering wheel. It mainly depends on Amy. I don't want to put too much pressure on her. Let things happen naturally, the man turned his head, looking out the car window thoughtfully. Letting things happen naturally sounds good, after dropping off the man at his house, I leaned against the driver's seat, staring at the room illuminated by lights across the street. I felt extremely agitated. I remembered there was a pack of cigarettes hidden in the glove compartment. Amy didn't like me smoking so I never carried cigarettes in my pocket when going out with her. But I had a strong addiction, so I often hid a pack of cigarettes in the car and smoked secretly when Amy wasn't around. I unbuckled my seatbelt and opened the glove compartment. A piece of O4 paper fell out. I bent down to pick it up and felt a severe headache as I read the words on it. Amy and I met in college. At that time, I was considered a popular figure on campus. Coming from a well-off family, I was the vice president of the student council and the captain of the basketball team. Many girls pursued me, including Amy. Initially, I wasn't interested in dating. I wanted to focus on my studies, develop my hobbies, and establish my career after graduation. I knew that my family would arrange a suitable marriage for me when the time came. I just needed to find someone I had a good connection with. So, I turned down more than a dozen girls, including Amy. However, I couldn't understand what had captivated her so much that she persistently pursued me for three years. In the year nearing graduation and internship, both Amy and I joined the same company. It was a highly competitive company that had high standards even for interns. I was surprised to find that Amy also secured an internship there. It was during that time that I truly noticed Amy and got to know her. I discovered that she was a disciplined, hardworking, and intelligent person. Throughout the internship, she never showed any interest or confessed her feelings for me. I assumed she understood that we weren't likely to be together, so she focused solely on her work. I also dedicated all my time and effort to work, 
hoping to secure a permanent position at the company before graduation. However, as the first semester of our final year in college ended, I didn't receive a contract offer from the company, but Amy did. Amy's abilities were recognized by the company, and the CEO highly appreciated her work. She was offered a full-time position even before graduating. It was the first time I felt a sense of defeat. This defeat haunted me throughout the second semester of my final year, which was filled with anguish. I couldn't accept the idea of leaving that company nor being overshadowed by Amy. So, after graduation, I submitted my resume to the same company once again. After going through multiple rounds of interviews, I reached the final stage. I faced Amy once more, and she looked stunning, making it hard to look away. She sat among the company executives, smiling at me and saying, You're so outstanding. Are you sure you want to join our company? I looked into Amy's bright eyes, and my heart started racing. I gazed at her, hesitated, clenched my fist, and nodded. I strongly identify with the company's philosophy. I spoke a lot, and by the end, I felt my limbs turning icy due to nervousness. I glanced at Amy. After Amy exchanged a few words with the other executives, they all stood up, leaving only Amy and me in the conference room. Amy stood up and leaned closer to my ear, her eyes squinting. I inquired about it. This company allows office romances, I looked at Amy, surprised. She raised an eyebrow at me, patted my shoulder, and smiled with a hint of flirtation. On behalf of the HR department, I welcome you to join, from that day on, Amy and I entered a period of ambiguity. Two years later, we officially confirmed our relationship, but Amy decided to quit the company. I asked her why, feeling puzzled. She said she wanted to have her own space and establish herself in the city to become successful. Witnessing Amy's determination, I also left the job I quite liked and started from scratch with her. Our luck was on our side. In about two years, we established our own company. Though not large, it provided us with financial freedom. That New Year's, I proposed to Amy and we got married at the end of the following year. Now, it has been four years since our wedding. We have supported each other through the toughest times, and everything has been getting better. However, I was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor. I hadn't figured out how to tell Amy about it when she surprised me. It was she who initially pursued me, so why did she betray our marriage in such a humiliating way? It was already past midnight when I returned home. Amy was sleeping restlessly on the couch, her short skirt riding up. I sighed in resignation and covered her with a blanket. As I bent down and looked at Amy's heavily made-up face, I shook my head slightly. I didn't know when it started, but Amy had developed a liking for bold red lipstick. Perhaps it was when I stepped back from running the company and she became the dominant female CEO. She was ambitious and wanted to excel in everything, while I was more moderate, accepting what I couldn't change and going with the flow. Our biggest argument occurred a year and a half ago. The company was growing rapidly, and I suggested that Amy slow down and take steady steps to avoid mistakes and regret later on. But she thought I was overly cautious and narrow-minded. She believed that our success was solely due to her personal efforts, apart from some luck. She even said she knew everything about the company and didn't need my guidance. That argument went on for a long time, and it escalated to the point where Amy even mentioned divorce. It was the most hurtful thing she had said since we got married. After that argument, I gradually withdrew from the company and stopped getting involved in its affairs. For me, a harmonious family was more important than dominating in the company. Moreover, Amy enjoyed being a manager, and I willingly became the solid support behind her. But after I left the company, Amy became busier and busier. During her busiest times, she would disappear for a whole month. 
I felt like a resentful woman confined to a lonely house, waiting for her day after day. Maybe that was when she changed, becoming unfaithful to our marriage. Michael, don't go. Let's have one more drink, Amy turned over and reached out for me. As I watched her half-leaning body reaching out, calling someone else's name, I took a step back. I removed the blanket from her body, she wouldn't need my warmth anymore. I spent the whole night smoking in the bedroom. I couldn't figure out why things had turned out this way. I pressed my fingers against my throbbing head, extinguishing the last cigarette but on the windowsill. When it was getting light outside, I heard hurried footsteps in the living room, followed by the sound of the bedroom door being pushed open. Amy, wearing yesterday's clothes, frowned and stared at me with a gaze filled with disgust. Jack, how many times have I told you not to smoke in the bedroom? Don't you know I hate the smell of smoke? and you left the cigarette but on the windowsill. Don't we have an ashtray in the house? How did you become so selfish and messy? Where is the clean and considerate Jack I used to know? Amy furrowed her brow, staring at me, trembling with anger. I stood up and faced Amy, feeling a severe headache and some discomfort in my stomach, even a slight urge to vomit. I clenched my fist and looked at Amy. I went to the hospital yesterday, Amy impatiently stared at me. Don't change the subject. I'm talking about why you don't listen to me, why you do things I hate, when are you going to quit smoking? The doctor said my health is not good, and I need more rest, a pleasant mood, and... Amy scoffed and laughed. You need more rest, Jack, for the past year and a half, I have been taking care of you, living a life like a wealthy lady. What right do you have to say you need more rest, I warn you, if you smoke in the house again, I won't come back, Amy angrily opened the closet and grabbed two pieces of clothing, not even bothering to look at me. I laughed at myself, realizing that not loving someone is so evident. The disgust on Amy's face was about to overflow. Amy walked towards the door with the clothes in her hand, and I stopped her in place. Let's get a divorce, originally, I just wanted to dissolve our marriage, part ways, and move on. I never thought she would consider me a poor lunatic trying to get a share of her wealth through divorce. If that's what she thinks, then I'll play along. The company was built from scratch by both Amy and me. It's not fair for me to hide away alone, silently waiting for death. While she enjoys prosperity with that gigolo. I gripped my phone and dialed my lawyer friend's number. Andrew, I have something I want to consult with you. After hanging up the phone, my headache worsened. I lifted my hand and kept tapping on my head, forcing myself to get up from the bed. When I was young, my father often told me that with strong willpower, nothing in this world can bring me down. I just had a tumor in my head causing headaches and disturbing my peace of mind. As long as my willpower is strong, I can overcome it. I struggled to stand in front of the closet, reaching out for the shirts inside. I stared at the shirts, but suddenly everything became blurry. I couldn't even see the shapes of the clothes clearly. I rubbed my eyes, but the blurriness persisted. Frustration crept onto my face as I furrowed my brow. I randomly grabbed a shirt, just as I touched the hem, everything went black, and I lost consciousness. When I regained consciousness, it was already dark outside. I looked up at the ceiling and reached for the phone beside me. I brought the phone screen close to my eyes, looking at the dozen missed calls from Andrew, and furrowed my brow. I was about to call him back when Amy suddenly called. I squinted my eyes and double-checked the caller ID several times before answering the call. Jack, I don't care how crazy you want to be, but don't let your friends' calls come to me, I'm exhausted from work all day. I don't have the time or obligation to help your friend find you, there's a lot going on at the company recently. And I won't be coming back this month. I hope the next time I come back, you've successfully quit smoking Amy hung up the phone, 
and I moved my lips but couldn't utter a single word. I rubbed my eyes vigorously, but everything remained blurry. While at the hospital, the doctor informed me that the location of the tumor in my brain was particularly problematic. It was not only pressing on my optic nerve but also on my motor nerves. In the days to come, I could potentially become blind and even end up as a wheelchair-bound invalid. The thought struck me, and I immediately dialed Andrew's number. Andrew was a renowned divorce lawyer who rarely lost cases. We agreed to meet at a 24-hour cafe near my house. Andrew tossed his briefcase onto the table and looked at me with a furrowed brow, his face serious. What's going on? I called you multiple times this afternoon, and Amy told me she has nothing to do with your affairs. What's happening between the two of you, what's happening? I forced a bitter smile and took a sip of coffee. The bitterness of the coffee made me furrow my brow involuntarily. I looked up at Andrew and got straight to the point. I want to divorce Amy. How much of the property can I get? Andrew stared at me, slightly taken aback by my expression. Why do you suddenly want a divorce? You and Amy. I gripped the coffee cup tightly, pressing my thumb against the handle. Amy is pregnant but the child is not mine, Andrew looked at me in shock. What did you say? I sighed and looked down. This is what I've gathered so far. I don't want to dwell on it. But I want to settle the property issues with her and have a peaceful divorce. Is it possible to have a peaceful divorce while dividing the property, even if I want a peaceful divorce, do you think Amy will agree to it? Since she has gone to such lengths, I believe the best course of action is for you to find evidence of her affair and make her the primary responsible party. With my skills, as long as the evidence is sufficient, I can leave her with nothing, leaving her with nothing. I stared into the dark coffee in my cup. If Amy were to lose everything she had worked so hard for, she would probably go insane. After all, she would likely want to take me down with her. Jack. I know your feelings for Amy run deep, but if she has betrayed your love by carrying someone else's child, who can guarantee that she won't harm you in the future if you peacefully divorce her, listening to Andrew's words, I slowly raised my head. The hand that had been resting by my side clenched into a fist. All right, I'll leave everything to you. After the divorce, I will give you 80% of the property, Andrew had impressive tactics, and it didn't take long for him to come back with a stack of photos. I looked at the pictures of Amy tenderly leaning against Michael, and my heart ached intensely. Lately, my vision had been deteriorating rapidly, and one of my eyes was completely unable to see anything. I pushed the photos toward Andrew. What should be our next move? Do you want to talk to Amy alone, alone? I furrowed my brow and clenched my fist with one hand. After much hesitation, I couldn't resist the discomfort within me and nodded. I stood outside the company building, squinting my eyes as I looked up. When Amy and I first resigned, we were still renting a basement. We lived day to day, struggling to even have three meals a day, yet we felt happy. Back then, Amy and I were each other's driving force, filled with determination that one day we would sit in a clean and bright office overlooking the entire city. Now, we have achieved our original dreams but lost the happiness we once had. I thought I could grow old with Amy, but she chose to get off the right halfway. I stood outside Amy's office, raised my hand, and knocked on the door. She looked up as I pushed open the door, and in the next second, she quickly stood up, walked to my side and forcefully closed the door, glaring at me with anger. What are you doing at the company? What do you want? I squeezed my fingers at my side and replied, this company was built by both of us. If I remember correctly, I am also a shareholder, Amy squinted at me and asked, so what? What do you want? I said I want a divorce. I just want to take what belongs to me, Amy sneered, you want what belongs to you, Jack? I told you I won't divorce you. You don't need to repeatedly get my attention in this way, 
I haven't been coming home because you're messy and not ambitious. You used to be so driven. Why did you let yourself sink to this point? Jack, have you ever reflected on why you've become like this? I glanced at the slightly wrinkled clothes I was wearing and smirked. Why did I become like this? What do you think? When I was at the company, you used every means to suppress me, and at home, you found reasons to argue with me, you said I didn't care about you, that I was solely focused on work. You complained that I was too busy every day and didn't consider your feelings. You said the employees at my company listened to me and not you. You said you wanted to be that powerful woman and have everyone in the company recognize you. It was you who forced me to leave the company using various means, and in the end, you looked down on me. Amy, there's a limit to how much you can bully someone Amy looked at me, a hint of guilt flashing in her eyes, and she snorted. So what? You left on your own accord. I didn't hold a knife to your throat. In the end, it's because you couldn't handle the pressure, handle the pressure. Amy, I left because I wanted to be the man behind you, to support you in doing what you love. I wanted to see you confident and radiant, I voluntarily left the company not because I couldn't handle the pressure, but because I love you more than you think Amy looked at me with a slight surprise, pursed her lips, and a complex expression flickered in her eyes. She turned her head, her tone harsh. Jack, are you going crazy? If you're not okay, then. I pinched the photo in my pocket and interrupted her. You and Michael. Amy cut me off, speaking quickly, her face looking unpleasant. Are you out of your mind? I am innocent with everyone, including Michael. You don't need to throw dirt on me just for the sake of divorce settlement, throw dirt. I took out the photo from my pocket and held it up in front of Amy. If I'm not mistaken, intimate relationships shouldn't exist between superiors and subordinates, right? Amy snatched the photo from my hand, her voice raised, you had someone follow me? What are you planning? I just want to divorce you and get what belongs to me. I don't want anything else, I said to Amy as she approached me, her gaze turning fierce. I've already told you, the company now. Amy started to say. I don't care about that. I just want a divorce and get back everything that belongs to me, I interrupted. You're absolutely unreasonable. I've already said I won't divorce you. Even if you have evidence, what can you do? Amy responded, her voice growing agitated. That's fine. Just wait for the lawyer's letter, I coldly retorted. Jack, don't push your luck. I didn't want to engage with Amy any longer. My headache was unbearable, and I needed to leave. I couldn't let Amy know about my brain tumor. I wanted to have a dignified divorce, get what I deserved and leave this world gracefully. I straightened my body and struggled to move towards the door. However, my legs suddenly became stiff. I clenched my fist, forcing myself to shuffle towards the door. My trembling fingers grasped the doorknob, and just as I was about to open it, everything went black, and I fainted. When I woke up, I found myself lying in a hospital bed. I squinted my eyes, trying to see my surroundings, but apart from faint light spots, everything else was blurry. I furrowed my brow in frustration, accidentally knocking my finger out of a monitoring device, causing the machine to beep loudly. Feeling a sense of panic, I didn't know where to look. Suddenly, I heard Amy's voice in my ear, Doctor, my husband is awake. Come and see, husband? It had been a long time since I heard those two words from Amy's mouth. In the early days of our marriage, she would call me husband every day, clinging to me and wanting me to hold her even when we slept. But as the company grew, she no longer had time to be affectionate with me, and she started using my full name instead of endearments. At first, it felt strange, and I corrected her a few times, but she grew irritated and called me by my name. 
Over time, I got used to it. I heard murmurs and shuffling sounds. The doctor was examining my body, taking my temperature. How is he, doctor? How is my husband? Amy asked anxiously. The doctor sighed, he's already in the late stage of brain tumor. Is there anything he wishes for, how is that possible? How could it suddenly turn into the late stage? He was perfectly fine before. Are you sure you're providing proper medical care? Where is your chief? Where is the hospital director? Get them here. He's so young. How could it be a late-stage brain tumor? Amy's voice grew louder, and the doctors around me sighed. I reached out my hand to grasp Amy's hand, but I only found emptiness. I opened my mouth to speak, Amy, I'm aware of my illness. Please don't make a scene, what do you know? Jack, what are you trying to do? First, you want a divorce and a share of the assets, and now this. What are you up to? Amy cried, grabbing my hand and sobbing beside my hospital bed. I heard footsteps leaving and the sound of a door closing. I sighed and patted Amy with my hand, not knowing where I was touching since my vision was blurry. I was going to tell you, but I saw you embracing Michael at the hospital, and then I saw the ultrasound report in the car, seven weeks pregnant, but not with my child, Jack, me and Michael. Amy started to say. Amy let out a heavy sigh, gripping my hand with her voice choked up. I had too much to drink that day, and I never expected that Michael would have such intentions towards me. I warned him, and I wanted to cut ties with him, but I never expected to get pregnant, the doctor said my health condition is somewhat complicated, and if I terminate this pregnancy, I might never be able to conceive again, I've been emotionally unstable these past few days because I've been suffering too. I feel guilty towards you, but I didn't have the courage to tell you, Jack, I know I made a mistake, and now, regardless of whether you're willing to forgive me or not, I will do everything I can to get you cured, if you don't want this child, I can terminate it right now. As long as you forgive me, I will accept whatever you ask of me. Amy cried uncontrollably. Listening to her sobbing, I withdrew my hand from Amy's grip. So, you're admitting to cheating on me and betraying our marriage, Jack. I turned my head to the other side as Andrew pushed open the door to the ward from outside. Amy, I recorded everything you just said, and I've already filed a lawsuit against you. See you in court. Amy reached out and grabbed my hand. Jack, how can you do this? I've already admitted my mistake. Why won't you give me a chance? I said I can terminate the pregnancy. We've been together for so long, our love runs deep. Are you really going to take me to court? I squinted my eyes, staring in Amy's direction. If I weren't dying, would you admit to everything you've done, Amy? You're just afraid that your conscience will be burdened after I die. You want me to forgive you so that you and Michael can be together without guilt, but I'm not a kind-hearted person, and I'm already dying. Why should I make it easy for you both? Andrew was formidable, he won the case, and Amy was left with nothing. The company and all our assets were now under my name. During the settlement, I discovered that the company had been incurring losses during the year and a half I had been away. Amy had been seeking financing to take the company public and had mortgaged most of its assets. After settling the company's debts, there was barely anything left. I instructed Andrew to sell all the immovable properties and convert them into cash. Looking at the extra money in my bank account, I felt no ripples in my heart. As a dying man, what use did I have for money? Following the agreement with Andrew, I gave him 80% of the money in my bank account. However, he declined and suggested that he could donate it to a tumor center in my name. I gladly accepted his suggestion. With everything settled, it had been a month since then. One evening, Amy came to the hospital alone to find me. She burst into tears as soon as she entered the room 
gripping my hand tightly. Jack, I know I was wrong. Please, I beg you to forgive me. Over the past two years, I've done many things behind your back. At first, I just wanted our company to thrive, and I wanted you to see me as an exceptional person. I never expected it to turn out like this, Jack, I have nothing now. I only have you. I won't go anywhere from now on. I'll take care of you properly, okay? I know you probably think I'm being hypocritical, but I'm speaking from my heart. When I think about it, you've been the only person who sincerely cared for me all these years. You've been the one who never abandoned me. Everyone else was after my position and wealth. They were all liars and bastards. That evening, Amy spoke to me about many things. She talked about our time in college and our marriage. It seemed like she wanted to evoke my memories and make me forgive her for her betrayal. As I listened to her words, my thoughts went back to our time in college. If I hadn't met Amy during my internship, perhaps the trajectory of my life would have been different. Like the initial plan I had for myself, I would establish a career, marry a suitable girl, have two children, and live a simple and ordinary life. If that were the case, I wouldn't be lying here in such pain, listening to Amy's cries. I never imagined I would get this illness, and I never anticipated leaving this world at such a young age. I've thought about many paths for my future, but I never considered that I would die in my thirties. Amy cried until she was exhausted. She lay by the bedside, holding my hand and murmuring, Jack, it's my fault. It's understandable that you hate me, but do you know that ever since I first saw you, I couldn't help but be drawn to you, I know you're outstanding, and many people like you. I'm not the most beautiful or the best at household chores, and I'm certainly not the most talented. But I want to be with you, even if I don't have the advantage among all the competitors. I can persevere, perseverance and endurance are probably my greatest strengths. I relentlessly pursued you, even after being rejected countless times, I shamelessly stayed by your side, that internship, I played a trick. Originally, the company intended to hire both of us, but I thought that if we smoothly became colleagues, I would probably never have a chance with you for the rest of my life, so, I devised a plan and gambled on human nature. I bet that someone as proud as you couldn't accept such an outcome made me paused and squeezed my hand slightly. Fortunately, luck was on my side, and I won the bet. I got your attention and became your girlfriend, I furrowed my brow, retracting my hand from Amy's grip. The tone of my voice couldn't clearly convey whether it was anger or helplessness. So, it was all your plan from the beginning to the end. But in the end, you gave me a cuckold. Does obtaining something mean it no longer needs to be cherished? Amy reached out and held my hand. Her voice was filled with excitement. No, it's not like that. I just didn't know how to tell you. I just didn't want to lose you. Although I've done many things that hurt you, I truly care about you, this time, with your illness and the company's bankruptcy, I've realized a lot. I was too greedy, I wanted too much. I always thought that no matter what I did, you would forgive me. That's how it was before, right? I could do anything, and as long as I apologized and acted spoiled, you would forgive me. Please forgive me this time, Jack, Jack, I promise this will be the last time. I won't do anything to upset you anymore Amy's tears fell on the back of my hand, but this time, I didn't feel any pain for her. I withdrew my hand and turned my head to the other side. Amy, some things can't be resolved with just an apology. I can't forgive you Amy cried for a long time that evening. She stubbornly clung to my bedside, crying incessantly. She begged me to forgive her, to give her another chance, and not to abandon her. She said she didn't want to be alone. But I no longer had any chances left.